Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Because you might get bored and you might feel sleepy. And if you feel sleepy, you want to be able to go to sleep. And in order to do that, you need to be able to close your eyes. So that's kind of the point behind that. As well as safety, of course. So, you know, if you're working on a building site, probably don't listen to this. If you're driving a lorry, don't listen to this. Flying a plane, don't listen to this during those activities. Probably even, you know, you know, anything where you don't, anywhere where it's not safe to fall asleep. That's kind of the thing, you know. So. Uh, or don't list in all those situations. Would be very boring. I don't think that I've got a recording. It wouldn't record for that long, I don't think. So, maybe I shall uh, list. So let's have a look. Let's have a look. So if you've got something that you you can look at it in different ways. It can be if someone's like a perfectionist. So uh, I've just uh, googled eleven careers for perfectionists. So let's have a look. These are people, when you're doing that job, you wouldn't want to be listening to this because, you know, you couldn't do that while you were safely closing your eyes. And some people might say, oh, what about blind people? And I'd say, well, what do you mean? And they say, well, blind people have kind of always got their eyes closed, which isn't true, obviously. But it's about falling asleep, not really about the visual side of things, you know. So if someone who is, um, or what's the correct PC term, uh, visually impaired, someone's visually impaired and they're crossing the road, or on a tightrope or I don't know you know just basically yeah don't don't be listening to <laughs> on a tightrope don't be listening to this um, it's about safety ultimately you know but uh, I don't normally list all the different occupations but I think I shall today not all of them obviously because I don't know if I'd I'd have to live to be about 100 and 194 in order to fit all the different jobs in so this is 11 careers for perfectionists and it says are you that person who walks into a room and immediately notices a picture hanging slightly crooked well there isn't pictures in every single room I go into so that doesn't make sense. And do you feel compelled to fix it? No. If anything, I want to turn it upside down. Uh, while this cookie quirk may drive your friends and family mad, it can come in handy for many occupations. Here are several careers that are good for perfectionists. So these are some of the jobs which you wouldn't want to be uh, listening to sleep recordings 
I mean, I would say don't listen to any sleep podcasts or recordings um, that anyone makes. And uh, but you know, it's not my responsibility to tell you that on behalf of other people. But it would make sense, you know. And yeah, it's like. I suppose it's about about using um, intelligence. I suppose I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't seem to be something that even would need a huge amount of brain power to figure it out. But I might be wrong. So airline pilot, and I'm not talking about airline pilot being something that would be easy to do. With no brain power, I was not. I wasn't connecting the two. They just happened to be connected, as the airline pilot was the beginning of a sentence, and the, um, you know, maybe not needed much brain power was the end of another sentence. When in fact, really, it was the end of a paragraph if it was in writing format. So, airline pilot. Or pillet, um, with responsibility for hundreds of lives at a time, it's no wonder being exact and accurate are essential qualities for pilots. They fly passenger carrying airplanes on a fixed schedule. I've kind of wondered why they're given a description of the job. Um, do you think if they just put airline pilot, airline pilots, and just kind of went on to um, you know the information about the job, people would be going, oh, I quite like the idea of that. It's a hundred thirty-seven thousand a year. You know, this is two thousand seventeen, um, so that sounds like a good, good amount of money. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wonder what it is though. I wonder if it involves picking oranges. Uh, I wonder if it's gonna. We'll have to wear special shoes. Mm, we'll have to have my hair cut. We'll have to wear a hair net. Oh, I wish I knew more about the job. So he's giving you details there. They do pre flight checks following a prescribed list. Prescribed? A prescribed list. That included making sure the aircraft is balanced <laughs> and has an adequate fuel supply. Pilots also diligently monitor fuel consumption during flights. So that's not that's all they do really. So it's not that's quite easy. Um, so that's fine. Uh, number of people. Employed in 2016, 84,000. Um, I'm guessing this is in America due to the fact that they put the, the coinage in dollars instead of pounds. So there's apparently, according to this, and this is 2016 figures, 84,000 airline pilots. Ooh, ooh. The next one is director, but not a film director. He says, whether they are in charge of, oh, it is film director. <laughs> I thought they were talking about company director. Okay, director, whether they are in charge of movies, television or stage shows, commercials or news broadcasts. Directors must see it to it that everything that takes place during the productions runs smoothly. They select scripts or choose news stories, hire talent and oversee the work of entire casts and crews. And apparently they get paid seventy-one thousand 
$620. I... Oh, I don't know if that would be correct, surely. Surely it'd be higher than that. I mean, $71,620, an annual salary. This is based on 2017. I don't, I mean, that's what, about, that's less than 50,000 pounds. So to be in charge a director of a movie or television or stage shows, they're going to be on a lot more than forty thousand pounds. Heck of a lot more than that, I reckon. Because you think if you were the director of a TV show, early morning, especially in America where they get paid, uh, the the news anchors get paid quite a lot of money. I was surprised at that because I looked into it recently, and I remember saying to myself. Wow, I'm surprised at that. And if the talent is getting paid huge amounts of money, you know, the person in front of the camera, I understand that they're you know, going to get possibly the, the biggest amount of money outside of the people in charge. The people in charge always make the most money. But the kind of the second down from being in charge and maybe like owning the news channel or you know managing the news channel would be the director possibly so they'll be on some big money I reckon but maybe I'm wrong I never have been before but I suppose it's first time accountant According to this, accountants earn pretty much as much as the directors. So I don't... It's not making sense to me. So this is someone that would need attention. So, so if you're a director of a stage play... And you're overseeing everything... And they're saying... Where's 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 Alan? Where's Alan? We need. We'd, he's supposed to let us know what happens next. We're going live. The the audience are waiting for the the next uh, the next scene. And Alan's there, fast asleep, listening to uh, me on his headphones, talking about how you shouldn't listen if you're a director. How surprised I am that they're not getting paid more. And, He's probably thinking, yeah, should get paid more. Bloody hell. No, 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 no. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, wouldn't work, would it? Or a pilot. I suppose at, li at the worst, you know, worst case scenario, if you're going to listen to me, make sure you've checked you've got enough petrol first. <laughs> enough, uh, enough fuel in your in your little uh, plane <laughs> or at least keep one eye open no I don't know just keep both eyes open accountant accountants prepare financial statements and explain their findings to their employers and clients in all fairness If being an accountant doesn't send you to sleep, then listening to me won't. <laughs> if doing accounts and, you know, doing spreadsheets all day, if that, you know, if you've, I'm not going to, I don't think I'll be able to even scrape the surface on someone that's able to deal with that. Perhaps 1.4 million people in America are accountants. I mean... That's a level of concentration. For me, with a plane, the level of concentration is to you know make sure that you know you 
well, you know, that you are safe and everything. Look out for mountains and, you know, hot air balloons. But with an accountant, the trick would be to not fall asleep. For me, that would, wouldn't that be that would be the the task in hand is to not just fall asleep on your desk. And they get paid sixty nine thousand apparently, which is about forty thousand pounds, probably forty one thousand, forty two thousand pounds. Of course, the amount they get paid would depend upon. It says median annual salary. I'm guessing that means the average, you know, spread out between the people who get paid a lot and people who get paid less than a lot. Oh, Andre's sleeping in his bag tonight. Good boy on the paper. I think he was about to do go to the toilet on the carpet and he looked up and he saw me looking at him. So he backed up onto the paper and did a wee wee there. I think the reason he likes his bag now is because I took him out in it. I think it was yesterday. And he got to roll around in the mud and in the grass. And what he does is he rolls around and then he gets into the bag and he puts that smell from the grass and the mud into the bag and then he likes the bag again so I think that's why he sleeps in it so much during the summer because I take him out a lot in the summer and he's constantly in and out of the bag so the next one is I'm not going to tell you what he's doing now Andre you've got water there Laboratory technologist. Um, laboratory technologists examine specimens under microscopes, counting cells and looking for abnormalities. They also type and cross match blood samples for. Um, Doctors and other healthcare professionals rely on laboratory technologists to help them to detect stuff. Uh, so, yeah, you'd want to be, you wouldn't want to be doing that with your eyes closed and headphones on telling you to go to sleep, go to sleep now. Hurry up, go to sleep. Me, 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 me. A court reporter. So court reporters transcribe the proceedings of trials, hearings and legislative meetings. They put spoken words, including oral testimonies, rulings and remarks into written form Wow, yeah. I, don't, I, I need to, I wonder how they do it. Because they actually, it's not a normal typewriter, is it? It's a, you know, those transcribers. It's not, I wonder how it works. Oh, I'm going to have to look this up, sorry. Court transcriber machine. Court transcriber machine how it works okay I need to look into this because I don't know how it works what is transcription how does it work no no that's not what I want why why are you doing this to me stop it rev.com came up and that's not what I wanted at all. Wind me up. <laughs> Go away. 
By the way, if you're out there and you're still awake, can you please transcribe all of my recordings for me? Thanks. So, um, I thought it'd be good to transcribe them and then put them on the podcast and stuff for people that, uh, for, for people that can't hear. So they could read what I'm saying. I don't know if it would work, but it might. How to write on a steno... It's a steno machine. That's what it's called. Stenotype. Ooh, let's have a look. How does a stenographer machine work? A stenographer is actually a trained transcriptionist, meaning they record spoken word into written copy and they do it f- fast well, yeah we all know that I mean I, 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 I didn't understand I mean how they do it because lots of different people talk in at the same time and wow stenographers court reporters and transcriptionists use a special keyboard or specialised keyboard called a stenograph machine which has fewer keys than a conventional alphanumeric keyboard right okay so let's have a look this has got a bit of information here What is a stenographer and how do they type so fast? So this is on court reporting ky.com. I guess that's KY Jelly, I don't know. Um, But it's, uh, if you like me, the first time you heard the word stenographer, your thoughts may have jumped to visions of white washed walls and an operating table or a geologist using special equipment to survey land. Alas, stenographer, no, stenography has nothing to do with the either of those fields nothing to do with the either I think it should be nothing to do with the either the of those fields a stenographer is actually a trained transcriptionist meaning they record spoken word into written copy and they do it fast Stenographers, court reporters and transcriptionists use a specialised keyboard called a stenograph machine which has fewer keys than a conventional alphanumeric keyboard full stop. This machine works by pressing multiple keys simultaneously, known as cording or stroking, to spell out whole syllables, words and phrases with a single hand motion. Remember when I said they do it fast stenographers are required to type at a minimum of 200 words per minute with some reaching speeds of 375 WPM if you want to know what that kind of speed looks like check out this video 
No, I'm not going to check out the video. I don't want to. Can't make me. This speed allows stenographers to do incredible things when it comes to live reporting. Ever wonder who does close captioning? No, no, no have. I thought maybe Tracy or I don't know, Harold, but I didn't really give it too much thought. Maybe the bloke that is in a library the other day that was wearing a trilby hat. Could be him, I don't know. Or who are those people you see pecking away at their keyboards during court hearings are? You guessed it. Stenographers. The utility of a stenographer isn't limited to court reporting, however, they are also used in live um, press conferences and speeches, and because of their accuracy, the documents they generate can be used as permanent records and legal reference. So, next time you see those subtitles at the bottom of your of you TV screen I think I don't think they meant to say bottom of you TV screen I think they meant to say bottom of you their TV screen or see quick quotes appearing in your Twitter timeline from a news story you'll know the work that goes on behind the scene to get them there. I do find it quite interesting that a an article written about transcription and you know dictation, transcription, you know his written really badly <laughs> you know with uh, grammatically incorrect so I, th I mean you could say well you're saying it grammatically incorrect which is probably grammatically incorrect but I you know, that's what I think don't just read about stenographers see them in action by hiring one of ours to document your next event now that's funny. This is actually a proper professional website saying to you, you can hire one of their stenographers to document your next event. Yet they weren't able to. Wow, isn't that funny? They offer transcription services. <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't write the writing on the page is incorrect I'm not uh, I'm not perfect with uh, all that stuff but wow that's funny I'll go back and see what else we can find about stenographers how much do they charge, I wonder? So there's services, court reporting. How much do they charge for that? No job too big. Oh, it's one of these things where they don't tell you how much it is. They just wanna get you to call them or to 
email them or to I don't know Twitter them but they won't say how much Ah. Ah. how interesting so I'll go back I want to know more How much do courtroom typers make? Full-time court reporters earn average annual salaries of $53,710. The top 10% earn annual wages of $92,400 dollars or more while the bottom 10% earned $26,100 or less the middle 50% of court reporters earned between $35,070 and $69,000 per year Yeah. I find it funny. I mean, accuracy has got to be the most important thing. I still want to see how do court repute. Yeah. I want to find out how it works. Here we go. This is worldoffreelancers.com. How court reporters use those little machines? How do you use that thing anyway? It says. Most record port, most court reporters like myself have heard that question dozers, no, question dozens, if not, oh, an advert just popped up. No, I don't want to be on your email address. If if not hundreds of times over the year of our careers. They get asked that question. Witnesses as depositions. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know, I understand how you type on that little machine. And some people say, how did you go to school for that? But well, I'm, I'm interested. I might want to learn myself. And of course, like probably most of us, I explained as concise as of Lily as possible exactly how I managed to operate my steno machine. But these really are good questions that people ask because no one in the world except for court reporters ourselves have any idea at all how we do what we do. Well, actually, it's not just court reporters, it's other people as well that use them. So she's uh, a little bit up herself there, I do believe. As it said earlier, people on television to do the uh, the live subtitles and stuff. So knowledge of steno machines is rare. Current uh, people, uh, court reporters, retired court reporters, and court reporting students are the only people. Again, it's wrong. It's the only people in the world who have any idea how to use steno machines. Again, it's wrong. He's lying. Only approximately 30,000 court reporters are currently working in the United States. Thousands more are retired or currently studying court reporting. So let's say the total number of people in the US who know how to operate steno machines is approximately 50,000. The population of the United States is around 328 million. That means only a minuscule 0.015% of Americans know how to use steno machines. Showing off a little bit, isn't she? I think. Just, you know. So there's a photograph of a stenograph diamond. 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 Um, and she said it's exactly like the one I currently have. 
I bought my I bought my new for four thousand five hundred dollars in two thousand and thirteen, but now Amazon sells them reconditioned for two thousand two hundred dollars. Just look at it. It looks a little bit like. Do you remember the old word, word processor machines that you could get that were um, like with the screen, and it's like a self-contained word processor. Because I used to own one in, I think it was 1996, and I mean they were basically. They weren't a pre precursor to computers, but they were um, I don't know they seem to be uh, that technology uh, seems to they're kind of like a, a heavy laptop in a way, but they're good. I, I had one, but it looks a bit like that. It was a bit like a something that I used to own in 1996 that you're never going to be able to know what it is because I can't show you it or explain it because it's not in front of me. It's just the screen looks a bit similar. It almost looks like a typewriter, but uh, which is what kind of, uh, I suppose, uh, a word processor was, wasn't it? It was a replacement for a typewriter. Um, but it's got these, it almost looks like they're little pegs. The keyboard is like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's ten keys. Uh, and then there's along the front at the top. And then there's one, two, three, four at the bottom. Almost like little pegs. Almost looks like uh, there's three, four little piano stools, and the pianos. I say piano stools. I don't mean the pianos done a poo. I mean the piano stools for people to sit on whilst playing the piano. It looks a little bit like that, and on the screen it's got a bunch of zeros and stuff. So I don't know do wonder how this works so I want to find out so it says um, I explain that we press down groups of individual keys simultaneously to write syllables words and phrases phonetically rather than spelling them out letter by letter like on a computer keyboard Doing this, we can type much faster than anyone can on a typewriter, on a computer. And this is why we use steno machines to write down what people are saying. So they do it phonetically, which means I guess they'd have to convert it again. You know, they'd have to change it to proper, proper words, like the correct spelling. Maybe that's why the spelling of that website was so awful, or the the uh, was yeah as well as so it spans three cent three centuries and two millennia so far, really. Steno machines for three three hundred years. Really? I don't know. No, surely not. Stim no, I think uh, by centuries, probably decades, surely. Yeah. Steno machines in the year, early years were quite primitive, like most things in the early years, because they were, of course, not computerised. A double decker paper tray stuck out of the front of the machine. Okay. There would be a, a block of paper about a foot long and two inches high 
in the bottom part of the tray and then they'd thread one end of the paper through a little slot into the back of this steno machine and as we wrote the paper would flow from the bottom to the top part of the tray with each word that was spoken recorded in blue ink when the paper ran out um, everything had to stop until it was re replaced okay it's shown as a little picture of well it looks a little bit like a printer like an ancient steno an ancient steno machine it's a picture it's called uh, stenograph stentura 8000 and she's saying it's exactly what I used back in the day so she's 300 years old wow um, they go for $1,110 on Amazon. Steno machines are now computerized. Today there's no paper and no risk of accidentally flushing the only record of what you're doing down the toilet. Why would you flush it down the toilet? We have multiple bake-ups and we're far more high-tech uh, so then she says she wants to bring it back to herself again many people ask me if steno machines contain those squiggly lines in other words old fashioned shorthand the answer is no the answer is no they don't no no they don't the keys on the machines contain letters of the English alphabet but the language we use to write on the machines is not called English. It's called steno or machine shorthand. We call the steno Yeah, we call the, the notes that we make notes. This is, the ang this is the English language transformed into a sort of written code decipherable only by scopists. Okay. Scopists are the behind the scenes people who fre frequently transcribe these transcriptions. Yeah? Uh, into verbatim transcripts. Okay. So they turn this gobbledygook into ming bong. It's all right now. And it's all perfect, correct English. Uh, and so it looks like it's good. Scopists are a big secret in the world of court reporting. Also, no one aside from court reporters and scopists or scopists and their families know they exist. Well, I do now. Scoping is much easier and quicker to learn than court reporting, and the job only requires a computer and a software program. It's a great freelance job, and people who learn how to become scopists can make really good money. Ah. Steno machines have 22 keys. Now I was looking at the keys on it. How many did I see? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Okay, I could only see 20. But, you know, I'm not going to argue. But, uh, I could only see 20. Let's see what they say. Uh, so, steno machines have 22 keys, each of which contains a letter of the alphabet. 
except for the key in the very middle of the machine, which contains an asterisk. Or an asterisk. Not to be confused with the, the Roman cartoon. Numbers are written by pressing down certain alphabet keys in conjunction with pressing down the number bar which runs along the top of the machine. There are no, there are no individual punctuation keys. Instead, you have to press down groups of keys to create each punctuation mark. And there's a little picture which is saying, Behold! And there's a picture of... Oh, I have no idea what that is. And basically, there's one, two, three, four lines. The top right corner is FPLT. Then below that, on the left side of the page, STPH. Then below that, on the right side of the page, RBGS and then below that on the left side STKPWHR and then further along the line on the right hand side FPLT so I wonder what that means so they're saying the first line is a period okay Second line is a tampon. No, it's a question mark. The third line is a comma. And the fourth line, an exclamation point. Wow. Okay, so while each key of the Steno machine, except for the asterisk, contains letters, of the alphabet. Not all letters of the alphabet are contained on the keys. Those letters which a steno machine does not have are created by pressing more than one key simultaneously. For example, although there are five Bowel of vowels, vowels in the English alphabet. Oh, I didn't know that. There are only four vowels on steno machines. There is no letter I. So it says court reporters use I by pressing the E and the U keys simultaneously. The asterisk has many purposes. If we mistype a word, we tap the asterisk once and it deletes the word we just typed. Tap it twice and we've created a paragraph. Most importantly, the asterisk gives us the ability to create thousands of unique words easily that without an asterisk would be a mess. Okay, would be a mess. Right. And she's given an example of a mess. So there's two lines. One line and there's a gap. So there's TK, there's a gap A with an asterisk and then a gap PB. Then below, there's another line which says, it's the same line without the asterisk. So TK, A, and then PB. Now, you know, clearly there's a, there's a huge difference between those two lines. And one makes huge, you know, amazing sense, and the other one is just, it's just, I don't know what it means. No, neither of them make any sense to me. So, believe it or not, the top line is the name Dan. Okay. Dan. The 
the bottom line are the words did Anne. It would be super hard to differentiate the two without an, est an asterisk. So it says, um, so this is court reporter education. Again, it's not only used for that, but it's, you know, these steno machines, how to, how do you learn? Um, and you, they do go to school to learn how to use steno machines. This is how we become court reporters. It takes most court reporters at least two years to complete training. This may shock you, as a lot of people think, learning how to write down testimony spoken at hundreds of words a minute for hours on end. Uh, this may shock you, as a lot of people think, learning how to write down a testimony spoken at hundreds of words a minute for hours on end should only take a few days. I don't think anyone thinks that. I think you're, I, th I think you're, no, I imagine anyone, if you say, oh, I type hundreds and hundreds of words a minute at the speed of lots of different conversations all going on at the same time, no one's going to think, wow, that must have took you days to learn, that must have taken you at least four days, wow, no, I'd think couple of decades or a couple of millennia maybe in reality memorizing what letter is on each key of the machine and learning how to write out basic words and sounds usually takes several months unlike typewriter keys there are no letters or numbers on any of the keys of a steno machine court reporters memorize absolutely everything most people who begin reporting programs begin do not do not finish the dropout rate is extremely high because it's so tough i can i can imagine i wonder how much it costs how much do they get paid I'm thinking of changing my career from well it's not really changing is it it's just starting a career after we've memorised the placement of each letter and the basics of writing out syllables words and phrases we move on to speed building in order to graduate from most court reporting programs, in order to become licensed in the state in which we work, and in order to be awarded any of the several certificates from the National Court Reporters Association, you must write an absolute minimum of 225 words per minute for at least five minutes without stopping at an extremely high degree of accuracy usually at least 98 percent oh. i'd have thought that it'd be for longer i thought in order to graduate you need to be doing like a couple of hours or something or an hour at least So it says there are different means of typing on a computer keyboard, namely real typing and hunt and peck. And there are also different means for writing on a steno machine. These different means are called theories. Different schools teach different theories. I learned the Philadelphia Clinic Theory in Texas. Then right after school, when I moved to Pennsylvania, Harrisburg, not Philadelphia, oh, okay, I was wondering, to begin my career, the court reporters I knew who had studied there had learnt the Wiley Theory. Oh, that must have been embarrassing. 
So you've got the Philadelphia um, the, the Philadelphia Clinic theory and they're doing the Wiley theory. How did you get through it? I mean that's that's that must have just caused so many problems. I'm not sure I spelled this correctly because apparently it's an archaic theory and I can't find it anywhere online. Whoa. So basically she just dissed all those people that were using the Wiley theory because she can't it's like so archaic and out of out of fashion and outdated. Ooh, that was a bit of a, a bit of a low blow, wasn't it? Other theories include Phoenix as well as Roberts Walsh Gonzalez. When my fellow court reporters and I talked about it, we found that there was little difference in our theories. Court reporters all can read each other's steno notes, although our individual writing styles are usually quite different. Many times we'll find a word or two written by someone else that is so different, so different from the way we'd have written it that it's hard for us to decipher. Court reporter steno notes are like snowflakes. No two are alike. Well, all, all snowflakes are the same. While most people, thankfully, don't talk as fast as the required 225 words per minute for five minutes without stopping, some do. I mean, they really do. I was, I was so shocked and so surprised at the same time. I just couldn't believe it. And some talk much faster for much longer. So court reporters have to be prepared for anything. As such, we have memorised and entered into our software dictionaries hundreds if not thousands of what we call brief forms and phrases in order to help us write even faster than 225 words per minute if necessary. Learning how to write words phonetically on a steno machine gives us the ability to do our jobs. Using brief forms and phrases gives us the ability to do our jobs even better. Instead of drink, it's made my, made my throat even drier. I just have to stop drinking sand. We learn many of these while we're in court reporting school. And we make up money. We make up many more of our own through our careers because they're easy to remember or are needed for words and phrases that we covered in school but we but which we never covered weren't covered but were encountered on the job so it's almost like they've got pre-planned or pre-programmed words or phrases okay without these brief forms and phrases each syllable spoken would require a stroke of the steno keyboard in order to write more quickly and neatly. We abbreviate with brief forms and phrases. The court reporters design and memorize things in ways that are logical, easy to remember and make sense of. I kind of want to know how to use it. So here are some of the examples of steno translation into plain English. 
brief forms and phrases as well as regular words. Uh, the steno you will see used here is my personal steno. Other court reporters would write some of the following differently than I do. If you're a court reporter or a scopist who knows steno, you'll be able to read most of this. If you're not, there will be still be a word or two you can catch. So brief forms. Uh, so I use brief forms to write more than one syllable in only one stroke. Here's an example of how to write the subject of this post. And this is in steno, and it says ST, a couple of gaps, and then on the line below, PH, and then back to the other line again, further across to the right, O asterisk E, then down another line down, F, then up, P, B, but below the other P there's another P and then further across on the lower line there's an S so from that I would say Steph like the name Steph comes up so let's see if I'm right um, first line is Steno the second line is Machines Okay, S T O. Yeah. Phrases. Court reporters use phrases to report more than one word in just one or two strokes. So have a look here. There's three lines. The first one is W H, and there's a gap or two gaps. A, then a big gap. U, then a couple of more gaps. R, P, B, and then there's two lines down, there's another line, W, H, couple of gaps, A, like before, and then U, gap, R, gap, B, a few more gaps, and then D, Z at the end of the middle line, and then further down, it's the same as the other two upper lines, WH, couple of gaps, and an A, and then there's EU, so all the all the U's are kind of in line from the top to the bottom, but there's an E in front of the, the one on the bottom, and then there's a couple of gaps, an R, P, B, L, G, now the R is the same all the way down from the top, the middle, and the bottom line. The P is, a, is on the top line and the bottom line. And the B, again, is on the top, middle and bottom line. The LG after that is only available. Well, it's not only available, but it's only on the bottom line. Okay, so the first line is, these are the phrases. The first line, W H A U R P B, what is your name? Okay. Second line, what is your address? And the third line is what is your age? So what is your name? There's no N. No address, no A. What is your age? No, I can't see how that works. So with three strokes of the keyboard, court reporters are able to capture three of your most vital statistics and learn some very important information about you. Ah. Ah. There are thousands of words, of brief words, thousands and thousands of brief words and phrases, but there are even more individual words. For example, 
Well, is uh, well, is world is spelled out, and then T P R A O E H R A E R P B S. It's all over the place, and it says underneath here are the words. Here are the words world of freelancers. Here are the words world. Here, here are the words world of freelancers. Okay, world is obvious. F is of. Okay. And T P R A O E dash H R A E R P B S. Freelance is freelancers. Doesn't sound like freelancers, does it? And it says here. I know that looks very complicated, but for it, but don't worry, it's very easy. Yeah, easy to say it's easy. And it goes on to more. It's like wow. Well, this is good stuff. I need to come back to this. World of so this is worldoffreelancers.com. This is the website. I want to become a, a steno stenographer, stenographer. Yeah, stenographer. That's what I want more than anything I've ever wanted in my life. I'm so excited. Oh, my fingertips and toes are tingling. Imagine having a job that actually paid money. <laughs> you know what? That might be something that I could actually do. Oh, Andre's decided to... He's come as close as he can get to me and start scratching and making noise. And now he's biting his tail. I don't know what it is. Because he hasn't got anything on him. There's no fleas or anything. He's absolutely... He could do with a bit of a bath though. I might give him a bath. But I feel guilty when I give him a bath because it's almost like he's... I don't know, kind of... Like I'm punishing him, but I'm not. You know, it's weird. Very strange, yeah. Very strange. So, I'm probably going to bring this to an end. But uh, I think we've just both discovered, both of us, I think we've all discovered something new and something that uh, could be my next career. I've just got to figure out how much it costs. Before you go, let's see how much it costs. Steno, Steno machine training. Let's have a look. Steno machine training. Accredited Steno Project Steno. Oh look, it's Project 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 Steno's basic training program. It's a free introductory six week program. To, dis- to introduce you the rudimentals of the machine. Um, okay. <laughs> I just want to see how much this steno training it says here. This is steno dot online. Start steno training for one hundred and eighty nine. Dollars and ninety five cents per month. Um, wow, it's a steno theory training and basic speed building. Learn machine shorthand. It's okay, and then speed building. Uh, one hundred and sixty nine ninety five, and that's from one hundred and twenty words to two hundred and forty words a minute. 
Ah. How long is a training? The training is not for a specifically defined time. Um, okay. We cannot go into a, go into a set timeline, but can tell you that, that we have had students complete this program between two years and four to five years. We don't know how you'll progress. That is up to you and what you can put into the practice regime or regiment. So I wonder, this is quite interesting, is this would be, I wonder if it's a UK because I'm, I'm, I'm imagining that this is something that you just have to be really good at. So it's, it's, you know, if you can prove that you're good at something, then you get employment, wouldn't you? Wow. Uh, I would think that they'd be outdated at some point though because with the technology of audio to written form you know transcription services and the instant stuff that's now available on computers and everything maybe that service won't be needed oh I've talked myself out of it Oh, oh, never mind. I'm just going to have a quick look, see what the stats are. I'll get rid of steno, all the steno stuff. At least I've learned something amazing. So, current week. So it's 2.15 in the morning. On the 25th of January, I've had 193 downloads so far in the last hour. And yesterday, the 24th, 3,411 downloads. And that's what it says at the moment, but it might be a little bit higher. Oh, that's all right. That's okay. So I'm going to go. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening and I'll speak to you very soon, probably tomorrow. Lots of love. And remember to be kind to yourself. Because you deserve to be happy. Take care.